have since 1844, um, Jesus has been judging. So is there any text that suggests that after Jesus is dead, judgment will occur? Anybody know any text in the Bible like that? That tells us that after Jesus' died, death, um, judgment will take place? All my Bible scholars, come on, Samia. Donna? No? Uh, Ruben? No? Uh, Red David? No? Y'all don't know any? <laughs> Alright, let's look at a, a few of them. Acts 17.31. Somebody find Acts 17.31. Somebody else find Acts 24.25. And I need Romans 2.16 as well. Acts 17.31. Remember now, we're saying, here's what we're trying to establish. If 1844 is incorrect, that is, if since 1844 Jesus has not been in heaven, then your Adventist faith is illegal, it's made no sense, and you should, we, we should give it up, basically. Right? The fake news. There you go, fake news. <laughs> but we're saying the Adventist faith believes that since 1844, Jesus is in heaven. And we are going to use now text to prove that since his death, the Bible talks about sometime in the future when he will jump. So that's one of the first ways you can determine, you know, that 1844 is true. If the Bible says that there's a point in time, and by the, by the way, all the texts we're going to look at here are New Testament texts. So anybody who tells you that, oh, Daniel is in the Old Testament and judgment is everywhere with, we can rebut that by saying that after 1830, after 1831, there are many texts in the Bible that teach that there is a judgment to come. And these are not in the Old Testament. These are all in the New. So read it against the Donna. Read it loud. Because he has... Because he has Did you hear that text? Yeah. He have appointed a day when he shall what? Judge, judge all men. And who is he going to judge them by? That one who was raised from the dead. Who rose from the dead? Yes. When did he rise from the dead? AD 31. AD 31. And the Bible says, after his death, there is coming a point where he's going to judge. Does not make it clear that there is some idea of a future judgment? Yes. So you think your Adventist faith is solid? No, no, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We are saying that since 1844, Jesus has been in heaven. And the Bible now says in Acts 17, 31, that God is going to appoint a specific day when he's going to judge everyone by Jesus who rose from the dead. And when did he raise from the dead? Come on, brother, talk to me. When did he raise from the dead? 1831. So that was our first text. Who has our next text? What was the next one? Uh, Roma, no, yeah, no, Acts 24, 25. Who has that one? Go ahead. Acts 24, 25. Oh, you don't have that one. Acts 24, 25. Who has Acts 24, 25? Acts 24, 25. And as he reasoned of, as, as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way, for this time, when I have a Convenient season, I will call you. All right, anybody know who Felix was? Governor. We studied that lesson in Acts the other day. Yeah. Governor. Right, and Paul was before him. And read what Paul says. The Bible says, when you reason of what? Read it again. I want you to hear it. He reasoned of righteousness. Righteousness. Temperance. Temperance and, temperance and what? Judgment. But no, there's no say judgment. What does the text say? Judgment to come. Judgment to come. Judgment to come. When was Acts, when was Paul reasoning with him? Wasn't that after AD 31? Yeah. So after Jesus is dead, Paul says to Felix, there is judgment to come. And Acts, um, we read earlier in Acts where it says, judgment to come by the one who was raised from the dead. Who has Romans now? Go ahead. Who has Romans? Twenty-four, twenty-five. 
2.16. Romans 2.16. Read it again, Sir Jasmine. So he says, there is a day when God will judge the secrets of? By my gospel. And who's going to judge? Jesus Christ. So again, those are these three New Testament texts that suggest that after Jesus' death and resurrection, there is judgment to come. to come. So again, you think your Adventist faith is solid yet? Yes. You think so? Long time. Long time, what do you say, Sir Elsie? He's What's that? He's going to judge the secret sin. Right, and we talked about that last week. We, you know, and that, no, no, that's important to know. We talked about that last week. Ellen White says, Ellen White says that the recording angels, read it in Desire, not Desire Pages, read Great Controversy, the chapter that um, entitled Facing Life's Record. She says, with terrible exactness, all the secret sins and details of our lives are written down. <laughs> so every little thing that we think we're hiding from everybody else, God is seeing it and he's writing it down. All right? So we talked about that last week. Can you hear it? All right. So now, those are three texts so far. I have two more texts. Let's go two more texts. Romans 14, 10 to 12. I want Jemani to read that. And Josh, read, read Hebrews 10, verse 30. So Jemani, read Romans 14, 10 to 12. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? Grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. All right. He says, we shall all stand before thee. Oh, to 12, you didn't read 12? So then each of us shall give account of ah. So notice, the Bible is saying, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, and we shall all give account. And again, it didn't say we have already stood before the judgment seat of God. It says we shall, that is future tense, isn't it? So again, after AD 31, which is a part of the prophecy that we looked at, there is judgment to come. Everybody understand that? Read the next text for us. Hebrews 10, 30. For we know him that hath said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, say the Lord, and again, the Lord shall judge in you. So, the Lord shall judge. Shall judge. Again, and this is what I want you to understand. If you can't explain all the details of the 2,300 day prophecy, you can now use New Testament texts that show you that after the death of Jesus Christ, he's going to judge us. He is going to judge us. And we believe that it started since 1844. So everybody understand that? No, no if you don't understand, don't say yes or no. Talk to me. Go ahead. I have a kind of complex question here. That's all right. It's okay? Okay. Um, so we're talking about those who Jesus being resurrected and um, he's going to judge people. Right. So how about those people who were resurrected at the death of Jesus? What's going to happen? Well, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. I'll tell you what. The Old Testament sacrificial system is a... a ideally answer that question because the Bible says in Corinthians that Christ is our Passover. Now, short, shortly following the Passover was Pentecost. And before Pentecost, you would have what you call the wave offering because this was a symbol of the harvest to come. And we are told that they represent that wave offering. So they are simply a representation of the larger crop that is to come. And that's why Ephesians 4 says that when he ascended, he brought gifts unto, gave gifts unto men. Um, and when he ascended with these individuals, he brought gave gifts unto men. So the Bible clearly identified in Matthew 27. He also talks about those who were raised into heaven. But the point is, they represent a wave offering or a small crop or representation of the greater crop that is going to come. When, when Jesus comes a second time, resurrects the dead, and all of us who are alive are caught up with them. That's the idea behind that. They represent a wave offering. Because shortly after Pentecost, you would have the wave offering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's kind of mind-blowing in a, in a sense that you have so many people resurrected when Jesus died. And where did they go? To have actually, the uh, Bible says that they were with you for 40 days. Yeah, but a lot of them were walking because people saw them. They saw them, yeah. yeah. So, you know, are we suggesting that all of those people who were resurrected, all of them went up? Yes, they did. They did, they did. They did. Go ahead. And my question is, those are some of them who worship God and say, holy, holy, holy. Well, um, possibly. They could be among the number of the 24 elders. Because the Bible does suggest that the 24 elders are men redeemed uh, from among men. So it's possible. It's possible. Thank you. Wow, this is... Alright, so... What, what seems my Bible? Tell me. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, so everyone understands it, that there are a number of texts in the New Testament that tell us after the death of Jesus, there would be judgment. Everybody understand that? Yes. Brethren, don't fall asleep on me, no, no. yes or no, do you understand that? Yes. So we understand that? Yes. So, did you get those texts? If you want to write them down, it would be good to have those because the idea is, and remember now, you know, remember now, all of us at some point in time, say it again. You want a text? Hebrews 10 30. Yes. Uh, let me let me give you all of them. They are Acts seventeen thirty one, Acts twenty four twenty five, Romans two sixteen, Romans fourteen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, Acts twenty four twenty five. 